بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان دا نیم آف اللہ دا موسٹ بینیفیشنٹ موسٹ مرسیفل ڈیئر سٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم ڈاکٹر اسرار احمد and it's my lecture number two regarding electrode potential of the subject advanced physical chemistry and the course code is c h e m 3117 dear students before starting my lecture i want to explain that what is mean by electromotive force dear students in my first lecture you have studied about the galvanic cell in which you studied that when we couple a zinc electrode with a copper electrode then oxidation takes place at the zinc rod and reduction takes place at the copper rod due to which electrons flow from zinc to copper Now the question is, why electrons flow from one electrode to an other electrode? The answer is very simple because there is a force which causes the flow of electrons from one electrode to the other due to which the flow of electron produces the current. and this is called electromotive force or simply emf dear students electromotive force mean a force that causes the flow of electron from one electrode to an other electrode and we simply abbreviate electromotive force with emf and it is measured in volts you know the term volt it is very common term used for the measurement of the potential so due to this reason we are we are making a relation with this potential with electromotive force now the question that how this electromotive force is developed in a cell the answer is that emf or electromotive force is developed due to different potentials possessed by two electrodes so if you want to define the electromotive force then you can say it is the difference of potentials which causes the current to flow from an electrode at higher potential to an electrode at lower potential the answer is very clear now that when electron flows from an electrode at higher potential to electrode at lower potential then the difference of potential it will cause the electron to flow and as a result a force will be developed and this force is called electromotive force dear students but in electrochemistry we most often used standard electromotive force just like in gaseous state you study that we apply standard conditions similarly if you measure electromotive force at any temperature it will be simply emf but when you measure electromotive force at 25 degree centigrade then we will say that it is the standard electromotive force so in the electrochemical cell if the solutions are arranged at concentration of 1 molar each and the temperature is 25 celsius then emf will be called standard emf standard emf mean that we have two solutions and the concentration of each solution is 1 molar so if the both solutions of 1 molar 
are present at temperature 25 degrees centigrade, then we will say it is standard EMF. But if we have an electrode in the gaseous state, then we will apply an other condition that the pressure of the gas working as electrode should be one atmosphere. If the electrode is being used in the gaseous state, then pressure of the gas should be one atmosphere. One atmosphere means 760 millimeter of mercury pressure. Dear students, now we have understand two terms that what is mean by electromotive force and what is mean by standard electromotive force because in our next topics of the electrochemistry we most often we will apply both these two terms at different points. So now we come to the our point electrode potential. What is mean by electrode potential? Dear students in my lecture number one, you have studied that when we immerse zinc rod in the one molar zinc sulfate solution, then zinc rod has tendency to lose the electron. But when we immerse copper rod in one molar copper sulfate solution, then it has tendency to gain the electron. So here, what is mean by electrode potential? electrode potential mean in the electrochemical cell oxidation occurs at electrode and reduction occurs at the other electrode so there are two electrodes at one electrode oxidation will take place and on the other electrode reduction will take place it means one electrode has tendency to lose the electron while the other electrode will have tendency to gain the electron. So this tendency of an electron to lose the electron or to gain the electron is called electrode potential. Electrode potential mean just like agar main aapko iski simple si misal de dun jis jis raap urdu mein kisi bande ka zarf bolte hain ke misal ke taur pe ek banda masjid mein jata hai to uska ye zarf hai ke wo apni jeb se kuch paise nikal kar masjid ke galle mein dal deta uske andar he has tendency to lose the money to give the amount to mask but there is an other person ek dusra banda hai wo masjid mein jata hai wahan se koi tooti chura li usne wahan se usne koi shoes chura liye ab uske andar jo tendency hai wo dene ki nahi hai balki lene ki hai similarly jis tarah kuch insanon ka zarf hota hai dene ka kuch ka zarf hota hai lene ka isi tarah there are different electrodes some electrodes have the potential to lose the electron and some electrodes have the potential to gain the electron. So if an electrode releases the electron, it loses the electron, so he will say that electrode has oxidation potential. So the other electrode which has tendency to gain the electron, we will say that electrode has reduction potential. So Potential is of two types, oxidation potential and reduction potential. Similarly, if we define what is oxidation potential, if the oxidation takes place at an electrode, then electrode potential is called oxidation potential. In the Daniel cell, oxidation takes place at zinc level. The Daniel cell tha, pe oxidation is pe hui? Zinc rod. So, lihaza zinc ka jo potential hai, that will be oxidation potential. Similarly, reduction potential. Reduction potential mean if the reduction takes place at one of the electrode, then the electrode potential is called reduction potential. And in the Daniel or galvanic cell, you noted that reduction takes place at copper electrode, so there will be reduction potential. So, you can say in the electrochemical cell, zinc rod has oxidation potential and copper rod has reduction potential. Dear students, now we will understand an other term and that is 
standard electrode potential standard electrode potential so we can say that by mean standard electrode potential is this if the half cell or the metal rod is suspended in a solution of one molar concentration or unit activity and the temperature is maintained at 25 degree centigrade then we will say it will be standard electrode potential and we will represent it e not if not is written it mean standard state standard state mean concentration of the solution should be 1 molar and temperature should be 25 celsius then we will write standard electrode potential with symbol e not if this not is not present on e it mean it is simple potential it is simple electrode potential it is not in the standard state but if we are using a gaseous substance that is working as an electrode then there should be one atmospheric pressure and so for a gaseous state electrode there are three conditions number 1 that concentration should be one molar or unit activity number 2 temperature should be 25 celsius or 298 kelvin number 3 for a gaseous substance the pressure of the gas should be one atmosphere so dear students we have no idea that what is meant by oxidation potential what is meant by reduction potential and what is meant by standard electrode potential and remember that standard electrode potential will be written as e not e not mean standard state dear students no we study the source of emf in a galvanic cell dear students the question that in an electrochemical cell or in a galvanic cell how the electromotive force is produced and what is the source of emf in the galvanic cell dear students the answer is very simple that in the galvanic cell oxidation happens at one electrode and reduction takes place at the other electrode where oxidation takes place electrons are produced where reduction takes place electrons are gained so to find out the source of emf in a galvanic cell in 1889 nursed a scientist he developed a theory and he also derived a mathematical equation which explain the answer of this question that what is the source of electromotive force dear students in 1889 nursed explain the theory and according to which there is a relationship between electromotive force of a cell and the concentration of the cell so there is a relationship between emf and concentration of the solution inshallah in the next lectures we will study nurse equation in detail here in this slide i think it is sufficient to explain that nurse put forward a theory to explain what is the source of electromotive force and according to nurse when a metal here we are writing metal with capital m so when a metal is dipped in a solution of its own ions here it is condition that some metal when it will be dipped or immersed in a solution then there should be ions of the same matter for example if you are dipping zinc rod in the solution then the solution must contain zinc ion similarly if you are dipping copper metal then solution must contain copper ion similarly if you are dipping dipping iron metal in a solution then solution must contain 
ferrous or ferric ion. So, here is the condition that when a metal M is dipped in a solution of its own types, here it is M plus 1, then there are two tendencies which are operative in the solution. First tendency, that the tendency for the metal atom to ionize. First tendency, that metal atom will ionize and go into solution in the form of M plus 1. This tendency in which metal atom ionizes and goes to the solution in the form of M positive ion, this tendency is called solution pressure of metal. This is called solution pressure of metal. But the other tendency in which the ions in the solution to give up their charge and to become metal atom on the metal surface, this is called osmotic pressure of the ion. So, we can say when you immerse or dip a metal in the solution that contains the ion of that metal, then there are two tendencies. In the first tendency, what will happen when you dip a metal to a solution, then what will happen that metal atom will ionize and it will produce positive ion. If the metal is producing positive ion, then it is called solution pressure of the metal. But in the other tendency, when the ions in the solution, they give up their charge and they become metal atom, then this tendency will be called osmotic pressure of the ion. Dear students, now we come to the standard hydrogen electrode. This standard hydrogen electrode you have already studied about. It is simply represented with she, S, H, E. And this standard hydrogen electrode is prepared in a very simple way. That take a beaker. And in a beaker, you place one molar HCl solution as you are seeing these dotted lines, they are indicating one molar HCl solution. Then we take a tube in this form. At one side, we insert hydrogen gas at one atmospheric pressure. And in this side tube, there is an inner tube that is made up of glass. And in the glass, there is copper wire. This wire may be of copper, it may be of platinum, but it is preferably if you use platinum wire, then it will be okay. And this platinum wire that is platinized or copper wire, it is immersed in mercury. This black spot is indicating mercury and this inner line where my cursor is moving, it is the copper wire or it may be platinum and here this wire is wrapped in the platinum file coated with platinum black so this is the apparatus which is showing standard hydrogen electrode and in my next next lecture i will most often often we say it is she s h e and Remember that here conditions are being fulfilled for the standard state because temperature here is 25 Celsius and the atmospheric pressure of the hydrogen gas here is one atmosphere. Dear students, for the standard hydrogen electrode, one point is very interesting. That is, that on the standard hydrogen electrode, either it may be oxidation or may be reduction. So, there are two possibilities that she can act as anode and she also can act as cathode. This is very dramatical position that standard hydrogen electrode can work as anode as well as cathode. It depends upon it depends upon that she is connected to which type of matter. 
if the connecting metal with she has tendency to lose the electron then it will act as cathode and if the connecting metal with she has tendency to gain the electron then she act as cathode so it depends upon that what type of the other electrode is anyhow it is very very interesting point that she can act as cathode as well as it can act as an now we will study that how she can act as a node she can act as a node by losing the electron to, to the other electrodes so hydrogen gas which is supplied is converted into hydrogen ion so when hydrogen gas of the standard hydrogen electrode loses electron and hydrogen gas is converted into hydrogen ions then we will say that she is acting as a node on the other hand if the she is gaining electron from the other electrode then this hydrogen ion that is already present in the she they will receive two electrons from the other electrode and it will produce hydrogen gas so you can say that standard hydrogen electrode is a reversible electrode with respect to hydrogen it means standard hydrogen electrode is a reversible electrode with respect to hydrogen ion so we can write this electrode in this form platinum comma h2 in the gaseous state oblique h plus 1 and here we will say i will write in bracket c c mean that here she is acting as cathode dear students the role of standard hydrogen electrode both as anode and as cathode it is very very interesting but because there are very few electrodes which behave both anode and as well as cathode dear students now we will explain how the standard electrode potential of zinc electrode is determined dear students one point before studying this topic make it clear the hydrogen present in the she standard hydrogen electrode we have supposed it to be that whether oxidation takes place at she or whether or either either oxidation take place at the she or reduction takes place in both cases the electrode potential of hydrogen will be 0.00 i am repeating the sentence in both cases either oxidation takes place or reduction take place in both cases the electrode potential of the standard hydrogen electrode will be 0.0.00 so what we do we simply couple standard hydrogen electrode with that metal of which we want to determine the electrode potential in this diagram you can see that it is very clear that we have coupled the copper wire of the she through a galvanometer or a meter with the zinc rod then zinc rod is dipped in the zinc sulfate solution so what will happen if the oxidation take place at the zinc rod then this needle will move to the right and if oxidation take place at the she then this needle of the galvanometer it will move to the left so when we couple both these solutions containing zinc sulfate and hcl and or you can say we are coupling zinc rod with standard hydrogen electrode through this salt bridge containing potassium chloride then this zinc will release two electrons so zinc will be converted into zinc plus two ion plus two electrons and hydrogen ion present in this standard hydrogen electrode they will receive two electron and it will be reduced to hydrogen gas so ultimately the value here in the galvanometer 
it will show the oxidation potential of the zinc electron. So, if you see here that the net flow of electron that is taking place from zinc to she, we can say the galvanometer shows 0 0.76 volt. It means zinc metal has been converted into zinc ion and zinc has lost two electrons. So zinc will act as anode and hydrogen ion of the standard hydrogen electrode by receiving these two electrons it will convert into hydrogen gas so it will work as cathode. So dear students from this diagram you can have an idea the electrode of which we want to determine the electrode potential we can couple it with a standard hydrogen electrode and the values on this galvanometer it will indicate that what is the electrode potential of the other electrode that is connected to this sheet. So if we couple this zinc rod with this standard hydrogen electrode then we come to know that the potential is shown on the screen is 0 0.76 volt. So it is the oxidation potential of the zinc. Similarly, similarly if you want to determine the electrode potential of copper, then simply couple this copper rod with standard hydrogen electrode. In this case, what will happen? Hydrogen of the she, it will lose electron. So, hydrogen of the standard hydrogen electrode, it will work as anode, while copper, it will gain two electron and it will be reduced to metallic copper. So copper will act as cathode and when we couple this copper with standard hydrogen electrode then we come to know that the electromotive force of the shell that is noted from the galvanometer it comes out to be 0 0.34 volt 0 0.34 volt for the copper and 0 0.76 volt for the zinc but remember we have the, these two different metals. Zinc has the tendency to lose the electron, while copper has tendency to gain the electron. So, zinc electrode potential is 0 0.76 volt, while the copper has 0 0.34 volt. Dear students, dear students, this is the figure which is showing that we have coupled this standard hydrogen electrode through a salt bridge with this copper rod. This figure is very much similar as you can see in the previous diagram that we have coupled zinc with standard hydrogen electrode. In this diagram you can see that we have coupled copper rod with the standard hydrogen electrode through a salt bridge wire. Copper wire has been connected to this galvanometer and this copper wire of the standard hydrogen electrode has also been connected with galvanometer. So what will happen? In this case the flow of electron will be from she to copper rod. So copper will lose the electron, it will work as anode while hydrogen it will lose the electron, electron so it will work as cathode. Dear students, as I have explained that in electrochemistry we will most often use standard hydrogen electrode. But there is an other reference electrode that is calomel electrode. What is mean by calomel? Calomel means it is the mixture of mercury with mercurous chloride in the presence of potassium chloride. So you can say that Calomel electrode is made up of mercury, mercurous chloride and potassium chloride and this calomel electrode has been shown in this figure and you can see here in this case or in this case it may be in the tube or it may be in the bottle. Here it is in the tube form, here it is in the bottle form. Either you take the tube or a bottle, the composition of a calomel electrode will be 
that at the end of this tube or bottle you will take mercury. This black sign shows it, is showing mercury. Above mercury we will take the paste of mercurous color. And then there will be an other uh, third layer that is made up of mercury. So first layer mercury, second layer mercurous chloride paste and third layer mercury. And here you are seeing dotted points. These are the potassium chloride solution. And from this side you can insert the solution. And if you see inside the tube or inside the bottle, here is a copper wire. And this copper wire is connected to the galvanometer. And remember, here we have also a side tube, this side tube that is the salt bridge. Here, it is the liquid bridge or salt bridge and the salt bridge here is the inverted U-shape. One end of this U-shape is dipped in this potassium chloride solution while the other will be dipped on the other solution of whom we want to determine the electrode potential. So dear students remember that if we don't have standard hydrogen electrode then calomel electrode can be used. Dear student, if you are using a calomel electrode then remember in this case electrode act if it act as anode then oxidation will take place as follows that mercury will lose two electron it will produce mercuric ion this mercuric ion will react with two chloride ion and it will produce mercurous chloride and if you see that here if you write the overall reaction then what will happen that we can cut this mercurous sign with this mercurous sign so the overall reaction will be 2 mole of mercury with 2 mole of chloride ion it will produce 1 mole of mercurous chloride and 2 mole of electron similarly dear students if this electrode is acting as cathode then reduction will take place on and if reduction take place you can see that mercurous chloride it will produce one mole of mercurous ion and two mole of chloride ion then this mercurous ion will receive two electron and it will produce two mole of mercury and if you write the overall reaction then this mercurous ion will be cancelled out with this mercurous ion then mercurous chloride with, will uh, uh, gain two mole of electron and it will produce 2 mole of mercury and 2 mole of chloride ion. So in these reactions you can have an idea that if you are using a calumel electrode then oxidation and reduction can take place depending upon the other electrode that is connected with this calumel electrode. So if oxidation takes place then the overall reaction will be this way because two electron will be in the product side and if reduction take place then these two electron will be present on the reactant side so if oxidation take place then this mercury it will release two electron and if reduction take place then mercurous ion will receive two electron and it will produce two mole of mercury so these students Calomel electrode is a reversible electrode with respect to chloride ion just like she is also a reversible electrode with respect to hydrogen ion. Similarly, calomel electrode is a reversible electrode with respect to the chloride ion. Now at the end, we just write sign convention to represent a cell. What is cell? When you connect two half reactions, one taking place at the oxidation side and the other taking place at the reduction side. If you arrange two half cell, then a complete cell will be, as complete cell will be produced. Just like here you can say it is one half, one half cell. It is one half cell. And here you can see it is a complete cell because two half cell are connecting with each, with each other through a circle. So, if we have a complete cell, then what will be signed convention to present a cell? Dear students, here are two rules. Number one, first rule is, first of all, arrange two half cells 
so as to form a complete set. Let us suppose we are connecting standard hydrogen electrode with mercury, uh, uh, sorry, with silver, silver chloride electrode. Then we can arrange in these two ways. In first way, we can represent this cell platinum oblique H2 into 1 atm XCL into A is equal to 1. A mean activity. Activity mean the concentration of XCL solution is 1 molar. And this half cell is parallel to silver chloride oblique silver cell. This is called silver, silver chloride electrode. Here, she and silver, silver chloride, they are parallel to each other. They are connecting with each other through a salt bridge. So he can represent in this form. Or you can represent this she with silver, silver chloride, Ag, oblique AgCl, parallel to HCl of which activity is equal to 1 molar, oblique H2 into 1 atm, oblique Pt. So dear students, here, arbitrarily, we have also decided that the reaction which takes place at the left electrode will be arbitrarily written as oxidation reaction. Here, you can suppose that because we have decided it arbitrarily that the reaction which is taking place at the left electrode, there will be oxidation reaction. Now reverse it. The reaction which is taking place at the right electrode, there will be reduction reaction. So the overall reaction will be sum of two electrode reaction, oxidation reaction and reduction reaction. Dear students, thank you very much. Take care of yourself. Allah Hafiz.